anyway, I um, I came to the Lord in 1989. Um, prior to that, um, I was searching from the age of about probably 10 years old, and I used to go down the beach. And um, you know, as I was growing up, and between the ages of 10 and 18, I spoke to lots of people about the Lord, but it just um, their testimonies sort of didn't shine because as I got older, um, I realised that these people were still drinking and smoking and going to parties and all that sort of stuff. And I thought, I'm pretty sure that, um, you know, if you're a part of the Lord's children, you wouldn't be doing that sort of stuff. So I said to the Lord, um, you'll have to find me. And um, when Alison and I got married, we decided that we were reading the Bible and um, and we come to the conclusion that we couldn't understand a word it said. We were absolutely lost in, in the word. And um, anyway, one day, and people used to knock on our door all the time, you know, just talking about God and stuff, but they weren't, they were Jehovah Witnesses and, and stuff like that. And, and anyway, one day Alison went over to Western Australia to see a sister with her mum. And um, she went to a Pentecostal meeting over there with a, with a sister. And um, she received the spirit and she started speaking in tongues. And she rang me and said, um, you have received, I've received the Holy Ghost. I, I speak in tongues. And I said to her, are you on drugs? And um, she goes, no, this is what happens, you know, when you, um, well, she didn't quite know exactly what happened to her, but Anyways, when she came home, we decided to look up the word Pentecost in the yellow pages and we rang a few Pentecostal uh, groups and um, we come to, um, and we decided on one. She sounded really nice. It was Julie Weeks and, and Pastor Larry's wife and she sounded really nice. We so decided to go and, and to that meeting on Sunday. Anyway, during the week, I was given a set of, given because I was in the building industry, I was given a set of plans. And this lady started to talk to me about God. And I thought, oh, here's another one. You know, that's, um, you know, I, I just zoned out because so many people have door knocked me and, and spoke to me about God. I just lost faith in, you know, who was telling the truth. Anyway, when we went to the Sunday meeting at the revival um, centers at, um, in just it was only about 10 minutes down the road that person who spoke to me last was in the, she i noticed the car was in the car park and i thought i said to allison that's the last person who just spoke to me about god she goes well wow, that's sort of weird isn't it and then anyway we went to the meeting we sat in the second last row or the last row and we joined the um we were running a bit late we got there i think when the testimony started and we um, we just sat, and no one bothered us except for every so often I look at this guy's Bible next to me, and he would show me his Bible, and and because we, we didn't bring Bibles, and anyway they um, he is we were getting um, no one realised we were actually new people. We they just thought we were visitors, <laughs> so we blended in pretty well, and um, so anyway we we left that meeting and we went to. Then we came the following Sunday, and then and I think that's eventually they realized, oh, these people are new people. And um, so they started to talk to us about God and what we received, what Alison had received, and stuff. And that was about July, and about October, um, in, in July and in, in August, I got baptized. Oh, sorry, September, I got, I got baptized, and then October the 1st, I received the Spirit and we spoke in tongues at a rally in Sydney and um, yeah it's been an interesting walk since then it's um, I've had some ups and downs uh, most of them have been um, ups but there's been a few downs Alice and I we lost everything when it was an in home warranty insurance company uh, crashed out and that means the building industry crashed and and then I just I had so many people working for me at the time about 100 people and, um, and we lost everything we ever worked for. Um, but the Lord always provided. We just turned to the Lord and said, Lord, 
Um, we want to put you more into the front seat because, you know, when you're running a business, you, your head is, is really in your business most of the time. And, he, and the Lord was mostly in the back seat of our car, not in the front seat. And, um, he wanted, and we wanted him more in the front seat, so we decided to move to Port Macquarie and help to grow the fellowship there. And when we got there, there was seven people in the fellowship. And two and a half years later, when we left, there was 45. And it was a big increase. And um, then Pastor Greg turned up. And um, um, I don't know if you know Pastor Greg Frost. He makes surfboards, which suited me. He made plenty of good surfboards. And we got the word out. We had lots of fun. We had plenty of kids to play, uh, to have fun with. And, um, and then Alison, um, she got a job up in Coffs Harbour. We ended up moving up to Coffs, and, which is only about an hour and a half up the road. And we have a fellowship here of about 40, 45 people, something like that. And, um, yeah, and then we made a trip to America a few years ago. We met everybody in, in Athens and Presbo and, and all that sort of stuff. And then we then... A couple of years after I left America, I had a heart attack, which you guys probably know about. I was surfing out at, um, uh, well, just before that, I got attacked by a shark at the same place. Then I had a heart attack. So I had a shark attack and a heart attack in the same spot. And then um, uh, when I, the shark yeah, the shark didn't bite me. It just pushed my boards up in the air and I was about a half a metre out of the water. And um, But it didn't eat me, thank goodness, praise the Lord. But then I had a heart attack there, which um, the Lord looked after me all the way through. I, I when when I went um, um, when I had the heart attack, I sat on the beach. I came in from a wave. And I was out in the water when I had the heart attack. I came in, had some prayer about it, went back to the car. I got changed, uh, went home, and I said to Alison, "I'm having breakfast. Call an ambulance. I'm um, I'm having a heart attack." And she just laughed and said, "I oh, sure you are." And I said, "No, I'm." I'm I'm having a heart attack. So I had breakfast. The ambulance turned up and they took me to hospital. And um, they said they gave me some morphine, which I said to them, halfway into giving it to me, I said, I think I'm allergic to that. And I, I could hear it. And I basically passed out. And then Alison prayed over me. I could hear her praying over me. And then I come to. They took a blood sample to get my troponin levels, which is like a blood, see how bad your heart attack is. Now, normal is, a, is 26, and mine was 168, which I didn't think was that bad. But um, they said, oh, we'll check the second one, see if it's how bad it is. And I said, oh, okay. So four hours later, they gave me another needle to check on my blood, and my troponin levels was nearly 5,000. And they forget, normal is 26. And um, anyway, the guy, all the bells and whistles went off and I realised I was in a pretty bad way. So they, and I didn't feel bad. I just felt like I am now, just normal. And so they brought me in for an angiogram and they said, oh, your heart has to be damaged. Your troponin levels were um, at too high for it not to be damaged. And I said, oh, I said, that's okay. Alice and I have been praying. She'll be right. And um, anyway, they did an angiogram. They said, this is the, artery that was blocked it was called the widow maker and um, uh, then they said oh there's nothing wrong with your heart and I said I told you there'd be nothing wrong with my heart because the Lord provided anyway um, yeah so they operated had a triple bypass and that went really well I was basically six weeks later I was back out surfing again and um, sure I got a few more GT stripes one on my leg where they take a vein out and another one down here, this goes down there somewhere. Um, but apart from that, everything went well. Um, 